Welcome to Love Letters Live. And today's guest is Steve Spitz. And I asked Steve to come back. If you recall, Steve, last time we spoke about a lot of things having to do with living um, what is now recognized and called a neurodivergent life, seeing things differently than what many people do or how many people do. But one and and Steve was a very strong, wonderful, loving, lovable presence pre, uh, presence on the Netflix special. Um, yes, oh, that was just love on the spectrum, just the best. And I understand there's going to be another one. Is that right, Steve? You know, we're not a hundred percent certain. Oh, uh, uh, you know, I know they have a a way of continuing. Mm -hmm with these shows, but I just don't know how and or with who. Oh, I know it's a complicated <laughs> business, but let's back up for a minute then, because in case we have somebody listening and watching now who didn't oh, yeah. see the first one. Oh, right. Let's just kind of recap what love on the spectrum is. Sure. And one of the things it was, was something that made everybody so happy. Okay. You say what it was or what well, it it's all right. You're describing it very well, Janet. It has to do with some of us who process things differently than others do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're all individuals and we, you know, pick up different things in our own ways. That's uh, right. Thank you. It's just that um, without comparing ourselves to others, which is a very refreshing thing for me. Well, it's a refreshing thing for everybody, I think. Everybody. And Thank you, Janet. Absolutely. I, that, but that... It's fairly new in life only because I've been here for, I mean, I'm over, I'm over 80, so I've seen a lot of change. And... One of the things is you say, you know, you process differently. Yes. From how others do, but the world has been geared to the others. You know, great point. Exactly. Very right. And I think because of that, it mm -hmm. makes some of us who are neurodivergent begin to think that, wow. What is it that everybody else has oh. that we may not exactly, and we don't even really know the reason for it? Well, so I was going to ask you that. So if you felt left out, I'm guessing that you didn't know why you were being left out or what you were being left out of. Janet. Because the world was kind of ignorant about the whole business. Thank you for bringing that all around. I think you're correct. And I'm so glad that you're saying it in this very way, because it isn't anybody's fault. You're correct. This was happening a long time ago, but I don't think that anybody in particular that I know of was a hundred percent certain about how this whole thing had come about. Well, they were not only not a hundred percent certain, they, I mean, I remember in the fifties, I remember the psychiatric view. They were not only not certain, they were so off base. Wow. Blaming people. It was just a mess. But now it's not a mess. Now it is not. I, I did have something to ask you, though, but we can get to that. So sure. the point of love on the spectrum was a beautiful look at people who are at various places on many spectrums, by the way. That's right. Of, you know, Down syndrome and autism and a whole bunch of stuff. Sure. That, that the the point of this was looking for love. People who are on the spectrum, looking for love, looking for marriage, looking for something special in their life that they didn't have before. Exactly. And, you know, I, first of all, it was so uplifting, but also I just recently got an email from somebody who saw you recently on oh. your episode and wrote to me and said that you were probably the nicest man on earth. Oh, and somebody my else said, somebody else said, if he doesn't, I want him to find love. And if he doesn't find somebody, I'm going to sue Netflix. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, people want you to find someone. Tell me about that. Are are you kind of half looking as you go down the street and live your life? Do you keep your eye open for someone? You know, you know, I guess without fully realizing it, I probably kind of sort of do. Uh, you know, there are wonderful women of all walks of life that I meet. Uh, they're all fantastic. Uh, and they're all so very warm and friendly, and they make me feel good inside. Uh, I haven't, as of yet, gotten quite to the point where I'm asking anybody out or anything like that. Oh, I, really uh, not yet, huh? But what? But uh, if okay, so so let's pretend that we're a um, matchmaking agency here, because I know well, people would love to put their two cents in so can we ask you sure is really specifically you're looking for in a woman I think a lot of it's going to be what all men are looking for in a woman so start in and let's see because I want people to listen and put sure. on thinking caps and if anybody knows somebody really appropriate right I think they should just speak right up oh oh by the way do you know do you know I heard this recently I don't know about other cultures, but I did hear from one woman that in Jewish life in particular, if if you make three successful matches, there's a special place in heaven for well, those who make three. Now, maybe that's true across the board with with many religions and, and cultures. Right. Oh, so, come on, people. Don't you want a special place in heaven? Oh, let's find Steve a mate. OK, go ahead. What wow. are you looking for? You know. I wish I could describe it. Uh, I know when I feel it. Okay, what I... do you want? What do you want her to look like? Well, let's start with some important basics because chemistry is not negotiable. Exactly, and the chemistry is what I'm thinking about mainly. And uh, you want to hear a fine compliment? A lady that looks like you. Aww. A lady that looks like Show Ray. Mm -hmm. You ladies are beautiful. In other and words, you're open. Yes, yes. You don't, you don't have a, she has to be blonde or she has to be tall or she has to be curvy or thin or whatever it is. You know, all women really are wonderful. And, and, and I, and when I feel that chemistry, uh, that's the part that's difficult for me to describe. Sure. It's, uh, but for some reason or another, it happens when it does. It can happen just in saying hello to somebody. It maybe it's their warmth. Sure. It 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 really uh, draws me. Now, do you want you want somebody who's I mean, I think most people want this. You want somebody who's a patient person. Oh, absolutely. and will under and will understand your particular needs. Thank you. And be That's you want somebody who's who who knows about a neurodivergent life or you don't care because she'll learn about it later. Right. She she may not know what it's all about. And I, mm -hmm. I certainly wouldn't blame her for that. Are you able uh, are you able to explain it well to her? Ah, uh, I hope that I am, uh, because uh, I know you and I touch upon it, mm -hmm. and uh, you really have a great understanding of it. And for those who may not, well, it isn't their fault. Uh, That's it's, right. It's something that I really do need to express to people. Mm -hmm. uh, because they may not understand why I am the way I am in certain areas. Sure. Uh, but you know what? I think having good intentions and meaning well, uh, we can go places together. Sure.
And, now, and as as far as I just want to kind of stay with that um oh, sure. understanding. So somebody who understands what neurodivergent is, but right. without taking it another step, because I always have felt that our differences are our greatest strength. I think you're absolutely correct. I, that that's a wonderful point. Isn't it so so being different can be such a plus. And yes. so you do you want somebody not only who understands it but who appreciates it? Sure. Well, that would be great. Yes. Yes. Um and I uh actively, I you know. Yes, okay. I, down to earth. Down to earth, absolutely. And, down and to I think, earth, yes. Not demanding. Yes, and not demanding also. Mm -hmm. Understanding, not demanding. <laughs> there we go. We could do a little wrap on that. that that's right. So, so moving over to what, to, to explaining it to somebody who's ignorant of it, which was most of the world until fairly recently. Yes. Um, when we talked last, we talked about your being raised in San Francisco. We talked about a lot of things. Yes. But I absolutely thought later, I forgot to ask you something that I think is really important that I wanted you to talk about. Oh, sure. That, that is, you mentioned that when you were in school, you found certain things difficult. Yes. And I'm guessing that you you said you found math difficult. Oh, without a doubt. On the other hand, there are very many people on the spectrum who are just over the moon, brilliant with math. So that's- Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. Dif yeah, differences again. Sure. What would, you, what would you, sitting in a class, watching things go on around you, and you are being, because you're such a sweet, patient person, that just oh. kind of sitting patiently and waiting for the world to get onto some level that you can jump in as part of it. What would What do you want teachers to know about having- students, young students like you in class, what, what should they be doing so that you don't feel left out? That's what I want to know. You know, this is very interesting. Um, I think that perhaps certain teachers, even though they are aware that we have some challenges, mm -hmm. uh, they also might realize that there's something special in one area and or another where we might kind of sort of um, excel in. Uh, I remember having a teacher in second grade. Uh, this is an interesting story. And I was doing so very poorly all through the year. And in fact, I remember getting myself a little worried that I wasn't going to make it through the you second felt that grade. You felt that in the second grade? Oh, absolutely. Because I wasn't good. I wasn't paying attention. Most of the time I would clown around with my friends and uh, didn't want to do homework. And I, I just mm -hmm. wasn't even caring so much about it. Uh, but uh, I was getting into a little trouble too with report cards that had loads of grades that said the words improvement needed and uh one day i was in class and uh, i hear the teacher i'm not even really paying attention but when i hear her say my name <laughs> and what she had to say i thought oh no now what now what's the matter she says we all know that Stephen Spitz is not the greatest student in the class. I'm thinking, oh, gee, did I do something wrong now? And she proceeds to continue with something that I still can't believe she had said. She says, however, I have to say one thing. When he gets up and speaks about a current event, he projects his voice and he talks to all of you and explains things very well. And if the rest of you students can pick that up from Stephen, it would be very good. Now, 
I think all the students did a great job. That's my thought. I, I don't think they needed to do that, but there must have been something that I may have done. And I think I might have thrown in like a little sense of humor or something because some of the students were laughing. And I thought, were well, they laughing at me? And even if they were, I was appreciative that they're getting entertained. Yes. But the teacher <clears throat> was impressed with that one aspect. And you know what? I think she could have a point. And I wait, wait, wasn't wait. want to give myself credit. Which was the point that she had? I think the point was that even though I'm not a very good student and I have all kinds of challenges and problems, there is an area where I might kind of uh, excel. Oh, okay, so I have a question now. Just sure. looking at it, this makes me want to just scream because that could have been a perfect teaching moment if that teacher had dropped the whole preface. In other words, never mind. First of all, we all know that, what was it, that Stephen isn't the best of, first of all, the we all know is pitting a class against you. You're right, you're right. You How know, you're- How dumb that is. Uh, but also, I understand. We, we all know that you're not the best student. She could have dropped that and just started in with, I wanna say that whenever Stephen gets up to, and just stuck to the positive. Yes. I think you know, teachers, teachers need to do that. You know, you have a great point. Uh, I, not even maybe thinking. Maybe they about do that, that now. What? Perhaps they do it nowadays. Yes, this particular teacher uh, is a little. Uh, I remember her being quite difficult. In fact, uh, my great friend Stan, who's on the show with us, mm -hmm. he also had that teacher one year before I did, so he remembers her very well also so she was no great shakes to anybody then i don't think so i mean i i but you know what's really amazing though mm -hmm. i will be forever thankful to her for the compliment that she did give me of course it almost feels like it overpowers all that other all those other negative remarks oh, good. okay okay and it's a special uh she really, uh, I think, hits upon a, a very special area for me. And yeah. I, I'm not one to give myself credit very easily. But you know what? That is something that I'd like to hold on to. I, I have all kinds of insecurities in so many other areas. And I'm not so perfect perfect in that one either but at least it's a, a something that I can very definite something because you have in fact and everybody knows that you've got an ex an exceptionally beautiful voice oh and, and and you are as clear as a bell when you talk about something oh that's so you so... definitely you definitely have that oh thank you Janet boy you're great with those things do you, do you think, I mean, I don't know, you know, I think the best teachers are teachers who learn from their students. Interesting. And, and I think you have maybe more of that these days. There's not such a distance. But what, what, that, would you, what would you like to tell a teacher? You know, you talked about your report card and needed improvement and that you weren't paying attention and you weren't listening. And what do you think a teacher could do or should do when there's a student who is doing what you're doing and not thinking and essentially just tuning out for, you know, what should that teacher do? Do you think what, I'm wondering what that teacher, should that teacher be thinking, let me see if I can find out the reason that the student is not paying attention. Something's going on. I'd like to yes. know what it is and then talk to you. You know what? That's a nice idea. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing. I don't recall any of my teachers communicating with me like that, but I do know somebody that certainly did. 
Who's that? My father. Oh, how did he do it? Well, he would ask me, you know, and, and he, he would say it in a very gentleman-like manner. He would ask, when, when you're in school, are you listening to what the teacher is saying or are you thinking about other things? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think my answer was, oh, I'm listening, but you know what? The truth is, my father being very correct, I remember just thinking about other things. Sure. A good majority of the time, unless there was something that really struck my interest. Like what? I would focus on it. What struck your interest? You know what I mean? The, maybe, perhaps I recall um, with words, uh, spelling, uh, expressing ourselves in mm -hmm. sentences, paragraphs, English. That I recall somehow going and sinking in. But some of these other things... Mm -hmm. as great as they all are <laughs> the mathematics the science mm -hmm. sometimes history unless it was something that struck my interest did, were there things in history that did strike your interest yes you're what? gonna love this one janet you're gonna love it and i feel it every time i go up to your home when i was in third grade we were learning about quite tower uh -huh. the history of lily hitchcock coit her fascination with the firemen the the tower itself and i thought wow this is different and i would look in the book and i'd see the pictures of coit tower and it almost seemed like it was coming out of a storybook magical and yet um, I almost wasn't even certain if it really existed. I mean, I, I'm sure that it did, but I had never seen it until one night coming back with my father from Lake Tahoe over the Bay Bridge from <laughs> Oakland. I happened to be looking off to the right, and I see the very thing that I see in the storybook, but now it's lit up. Oh, and I look, I say to my father, that's Coit Tower. And my father says, yes, that's right. I said, we're just learning about this in school. And I was really excited about it. And every time I go up to your home, I just go up a little bit further to the top and I stare at it from the stop, from <laughs> the very top of that staircase. Yes. So and that is so I interesting. Think of that very memory as I also look at the uh, San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. So the things that grab you are things that are different. It seems that what you're saying. You know, you know what? Thank you. I think you're absolutely correct. They I, I, are. They're yeah. different. Yes. And you can relate to that, of course. Yes. I have a question to ask you about when, when I think, you know, when grownups say to children, um, were you paying attention when the teacher was talking or were you thinking about something else? I think kids know that they're not supposed to be thinking about something else and they are supposed to be paying attention. I think maybe, and your father, God bless him. But I think that's still a hard question for a child to ask. You want to be you know, you want to do the acceptable thing. I, I'm wondering, what if if your father had said, or if teachers say, what are you thinking about while I'm talking? Oh, that's and, and making great. it an acceptable, you know, I, I wonder if that would help. And I'm wondering, maybe teachers do that now. It's been a long well, time since you were you in know, the they might. second grade. Boy, I'll tell you, that reminds me of a funny memory I have of watching the Brady Bunch one time. Greg Brady was in class. He wasn't paying attention to what the teacher was talking about because he was so attracted to her. He was falling in love with her because he was so uh, 
he thought she was so gorgeous mm -hmm. and uh he was just dreaming of her but not <laughs> listening to what she was talking about but you know what that can happen also of course of course we we when i was in junior high school we had a gorgeous math teacher oh right Oh, she was just beautiful. L.A. Bancroft Junior High. I won't say her name. I guess I could, but oh, that's right, she, right. She was just gorgeous, and she was just tall and slim and looked like a Vogue model. She was the math teacher, and I wow. will tell you that on Parents' Night, every single father was in that. You know, came to open house that night to be able to right. talk to her. Yes, there's something. Well, that... There's something about, and there are many ways to be attractive. But when a teacher's attractive. Yes. It can't help, I guess. Oh, 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 right, right. And you know, what's interesting is as attractive as one teacher is, you know, I find myself attracted to another teacher that looks quite different, but I find myself attracted to so many different kinds and, uh, but it can, it can happen. It can happen. I, I remember some of the classes I took same thing i'd be you know kind of attracted to the teacher physically without paying attention to what <laughs> she was talking about that's something they have to figure out how to handle i guess that's so, right what do you consider attractive in a teacher do you know something i'm so glad that you're asking because it reminds me of the very thing that i find attractive in different women sure uh, there could be something different about the lady mm -hmm. and uh whatever that difference is i might be very drawn to special character a uniqueness uh it's hard to describe it but i do recall feeling attracted to all kinds of not only teachers but some of the students mm -hmm. the girls in the class also you know one could really differ from another mm -hmm. quite a bit but i'm finding myself attracted to one and then before i know it i'm attracted to the other one uh, so I, I wonder i wonder if the basis for what we as people find attractive and others is if part of that isn't that we feel graceful in their presence, that we feel important somehow. Do you know something? I like where you're going with that. Yes, yes, I do think you have a point. Yeah. I, I really do, because uh, I've noticed uh, that sometimes if I see a woman who might seem to be attractive, if she's kind of not very friendly mm -hmm. uh, not very sincere uh it's i don't mean to say a turn off but i'm just kind of right there's no real reason for me to get all excited i I'm, i might just be sitting there going through the motions or i'll say hello or whatever oh but you're saying you're kind of saying you know when there's a possible relationship and when there is not yes and and some people that are perhaps a little uh I hate to use the word standoffish, uh, sure. but for me, even if they look like, you know, a Miss Universe kind, mm -hmm. I, there's, I don't feel a connection with on that. The other, on the other hand, Stephen, you know that when people are standoffish, they're doing that for their own reasons of insecurity. It's not about you. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I'm it's so not glad. about you. It's about self. Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. I, I, and I and I really appreciate you saying this because uh, I need to keep these thoughts in mind. You maybe they, they could, could be, be a very nice person too. And right. I and I to keep the be, thought in mind that you could be brave enough to try to get through that little facade if you uh, wanted to. Oh yes, if you I, wanted to. Right, right. That's that's a great point. Okay, I have I have one other question because I know we're limited in time. But oh, I'm so sorry. That, that I know I could talk to you for hours and you and I will to get to in person. Just we so will. When... Somebody had suggested that because your voice is so beautiful and the way you think and how clear you are, that you should have your own podcast. Oh, 
And I think that was appealing to you. Was that idea not kind of appealing to you? You know, it is. Uh, I don't okay, know so, how to work. Uh, well, let's talk about that because I'd like to know what things you would like. Let's do another one of these. What things you would like to talk about and cover if you had your own platform to discuss things that are important to you? Oh, wow. Right. Let's do that. And by the way, you know, we, we, I know I always have to talk about love letters and we talked about, and maybe someday you'll still do it, but I know you were open to it is sending a love letter to each of your parents, even though they're not here, telling them everything you appreciate and love about them and what they did for you and how gorgeous your mother was and how handsome your, I mean, they were really something special to look at. You know, you know, I, and then you can send that letter to yourself. Right. I, I have to say they were, you're very correct, a gorgeous couple. And yet, I, and I want to add on a deeper level, how warm and understanding oh, yeah. they were and how they really have great hearts and still do. And my heart is connected with theirs. And uh, we Good. could be very different in a lot of ways, but there's a special connection with uh, who our parents were as people. And maybe there's so maybe, much there. Maybe we'll, I mean, I knew your, I knew your dad, as you know. Yes, well, that, I'm so friend. glad that you did. But I ne but I can imagine, first of all, I can imagine the kind of woman he would have chosen would be your mother. And okay, I want to thank you for doing this with me. And let's do it again. Sure. If you have time and energy, because I certainly do. And you're um, great. Talk about what you would like to talk about if you had your own podcast, and then maybe you will. Maybe we'll do wow. something together. Yes. Okay, darling. Yes. Thank you. I and wanna... let's talk about and let's talk about getting together in person, you and me and Shoray. Yes, we okay. would love that. Okay, we did that before. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, of thank course. You. Bye. Beautiful. Bye. Thank you again, Janet. Thank you. Bye-bye. A pleasure. Bye-bye now.